Imagine if this plate was the solar system. You have the sun in the middle, and then the planets in their orbits going out. It's interesting that the, that the solar system is basically flat. So what would we call this plane that, on which all the planets are located? Well, I recently learned that there's a name for that. It is called the ecliptic. So I thought it'd be fun to share with you some of the new words that I've learned these past couple months, mostly through Wikipedia. So we talked about the first one, the ecliptic. That's the imaginary plane on which all the planets, the Earth, the Sun, are all positioned, more or less. You know, not perfectly flat, but for lack of a better word, it's flat. It's, it's pretty flat. <laughs> so why is that important? Well, I'll tell you in just a minute because it has some interesting effects on what happens when you're looking at the planets, and it goes along with some of the other words. So if you have all the planets on the same ecliptic, they're orbiting here, every once in a while, in their orbit, they will get close together. Now, close is relative, but from our perspective here on Earth, every once in a while we get what we call a conjunction of planets. And you may have heard this recently in the news. December 21st, 2020, we will have Saturn and Jupiter make a conjunction in the sky. They will appear from us from, from here to be one star. So conjunction is when two objects appear close from our perspective on the same ecliptic longitude, basically x-axis. And we're talking about in the sky, not on the Earth. But when those two planets are right on top of each other, that's a conjunction. Now a similar term to conjunction is a pulse. And a pulse is the word for the, the moment in time when two objects in the sky appear to be as close as possible. So basically it's the same idea, but just a slightly different definition. And, and more often than not, I just hear people talk about conjunction rather than a pulse. But those are both similar and related terms. Now up here in the Northern Hemisphere, to find a planet, we have to look along the ecliptic. Now where is the ecliptic? It depends on where you are on Earth. This leads me to our next term, Zenith. Zenith means directly above you. So straight out of your head, whatever's up there. And it could be different depending on where you're standing. Now the opposite of Zenith is Nadir, directly below you. Now when you're outside looking at the stars, you see them projected on this imaginary canvas, right? None of the stars are actually really close together. In fact, the same thing goes for constellations. Many of the stars in a constellation are not close to each other in any fashion, whether it be you know, the X, Y, or Z axis. They could be anywhere along that, but we are seeing them basically on this imaginary plane. And there's a word for that. That is called the celestial sphere. And that's more or less useful, but what you might find yourself using is the term celestial meridian. So the celestial meridian is an imaginary circular plane that cuts the celestial sphere in half um, from north to south. So it cuts east from west, and it runs perpendicular to the horizon. So this is kind of interesting, and it leads right into our next word, which is culmination. This is the moment when a celestial object that is crossing the night sky reaches its highest point before it goes down, and that is right on the celestial meridian. So this is interesting. Go out and look at, look at Mars as it's, as it's rising tonight, or even works with the sun, because again, the sun is on the same ecliptic as the planets. So you'll see, in my case, I'm in the northern hemisphere, I have to look south. Just like the sun, all of the planets will, will rise in the west and set in the east, and they'll all be in similar positions. In the winter, it'll be a little bit lower in the horizon, and in the summer, the sun and the planets will be higher in the horizon. And of course, if you're on or near the equator, the planets and the sun will pretty much stay above you. They, they'll vary a little bit throughout the year, but they will still be higher in the horizon than, than in other places. Okay, so let's test your knowledge really quick. If I wanted to get the North Star at my zenith, where should I be standing? That's right, I, I think I told you basically, at the North Pole. So do the reverse. If I wanted the star, the North Star at my nadir, where should I be standing? Well, yeah, it would be really cold, but I would be at the South Pole directly below me. Through the Earth, you would get to the North Star, aka Polaris. How many planets share the Earth's ecliptic? Yeah, you were paying attention. You know that it's all of them, including the Sun, because the solar system is basically flat. What do you call it when a planet crosses the celestial meridian? Culmination. That's right. If I'm here in the Northern Hemisphere, will I ever be able to see a planet by looking north? Trick question. Just kidding, it's not a trick question. The answer is no. It, I could maybe see Polaris, the Big Dipper, whatnot, but if I wanted to see a planet, I would have to look towards the ecliptic, which just so happens to be south, because I'm in the Northern Hemisphere. It's kind of hard to wrap your head around sometimes, but hopefully that makes sense. And here's an extra one for you. Did you know a planosphere is the name of those little paper star trackers that rotate? 
They're pretty cool. I can help you find the constellations. Check it out. Or download an app that has all the stars on it. Those are also fun and uh, a good way to learn more about the night sky. Thank you for watching. Please have a good day and remember to smile.